Panhard 101. What the hell is a Panhard rod? We're at the back of the Prado here and it's this rod that's attached to the axle and the body. And what it does is it helps, well it doesn't help, it's the only thing that keeps the axle in alignment with the body. Now you can see it's on an angle at the moment. As the suspension moves up and down, this pivots up and down. What actually happens is because of that pivot and that arc, your axle will move sideways. Once you lift your vehicle 50 mil, your axle is actually permanently shifted sideways uh, and we'll show you that later when the vehicle's back on the ground. One way to fix it is people put a longer panhard rod in to shift that axle back, but it doesn't fix the fact that because of the geometry is not ideal, you're actually going to have more movement sideways through the travel of your suspension. So let's spend a bit of time and have a look at the rear suspension set up in your typical coil, live axle, four wheel drive. Um, so what we have here, some 3D printed parts. This is representing your rear axle. We're looking at it from behind, like behind the vehicle. Your diff's there, your panhard rod is there. The green line is your, um, the ground. And I've got these blue lines here just to represent uh, where the wheels sit and where they line up with the front tires. Okay, we have the panhard rod there and as the axle moves up and down through the suspension travel, that's down and that's up, you can see the panhard actually pivots. And because of this pivoting action, you can see there's a little bit of sideways movement of the axle because it's essentially traveling through an arc. Okay, so this pivot here is attached to your vehicle, the body of your car. This pivot here is attached to the axle. So what happens when you lift your vehicle? Let's put it back down on the ground. Okay, solid. Now we can move and lift your car. So when you lift your car, you're putting a longer spring in and typically you get your two inch lift. So what happens is your body moves up two inches. So this is representing the new pivot point on the body. So let's move it up. So if we lifted our vehicle up two inches, the pivots moved up, the panhard rod's still the same length. Notice the angle of the panhard rod. Slightly exaggerated, but this is to um, show what happens. And as you can see, we have this sideways movement of the axle. This is at the normal ride height. And this is quite obvious on vehicles. If you've got a two inch lifted vehicle, go outside and have a look and you'll see that your tire is shifted over to one side a little bit. What happens when you go through the range of suspension travel? So if this is up, you can see it moves sideways a little bit and then down. And it's a bit hard to show, but the actual lateral movement is increased. So it's not optimal. So having the pan out on an angle and at that sort of position in the arc means that you have more sideways movement in the axle. Okay, so one way to fix this, one way to fix the fact that your axle, your rear tires aren't in the same track as your front tires is to put a longer panard rod in. So that pushes the axle back to the correct position. So let's go and do that. We've lifted our vehicle, we're going to take the factory panhard rod out and we're going to put a longer panhard rod in. Oops. And there you go. Our axle is back in the right position. In the lifted position, the axle is in line with the front wheels now. So we solved one problem. However, have we solved the problem of the lateral movement, the excessive lateral movement, because this is not the optimal geometry. So as you can see, in the compressed upward axle position, we still have this lateral movement and more so when we go down. Now if you've got long travel suspension in the back, this will be even more exaggerated. So is there a better solution? Let's put a panhard relocation in. So essentially what we're doing is we're moving the pivot on the axle up the same distance as the lift. Let's install this, there you go. So now we have a pivot on the axle, which is moved, uh, shifted up the same amount as your lift. And what that allows us to do is to reuse the factory panhard. And what you have now is you have the original, you've restored the original geometry 
of the vehicle parallel to the axle which means when you go through your range of travel you don't you have the minimal amount of lateral movement in your axle and at right height your wheels line up with your front tires so best of both worlds you get your lift you get your axles in the right place and you get the best geometry in terms of the minimal amount of lateral movement in the axle. Let's take a closer look at why the position and angle of a panard rod affects the sideways or lateral position of the axle. So I removed the axle, I've traced in the arc that the panard rod would trace through the suspension, suspension travel. Now, in the standard geometry, optimal geometry, you want to have your panhard rod in this position, which means through your range of travel, you can see that the lateral movement is quite, is minimized. It's, it's, it's that little yellow line there. That's the amount of sideways movement you're going to get. Compare that with if you've got your panhard rod on, a, on an angle like this. This is exaggerated, but this is to show you how much of a difference. So through the same range of suspension travel, this travel here is the same as this. At the top, this is where your pivot is, which is you know, representative of where your axle is going to move, down to the bottom, which is this position here. So you can see how much of a difference it makes when your geometry is not optimal. The other nice thing about a Panhard relocator is it's reversible. So if you decide to take your lift off, you can take that bracket off and restore it back to factory. And also, you retain the use of the factory Panhard rod which generally has the best bushings, which will, will uh, maintain your um, ride and, and comfort levels. Before we install the Panard corrector, just want to share a little story about how I knew my axle was shifted across to one side. I actually had a washing, I was washing my car and I actually noticed a heap more gravel rash on one side compared to the other. And my trailer had more damage down one side after a big uh, road trip uh, out, out west. Now, on this vehicle, which has a two inch lift, if you actually eyeball it, the left side here, it's, it's really obvious. So the tire here is pretty much flush with the vehicle. And on this side, it's obviously sticking out. So on this vehicle, the whole axle is shifted to the right. We got the rear tire off just so we can see what we're doing, but you don't actually need to do that. I'll quickly go through the process of how to install the Panhard corrector. So what we're doing in essence is putting another bracket in place so that this pivot moves up 50 mil, which is your typical lift. Now we're going to be removing this uh, bolt, which means this axle will start floating. So the, the smart thing to do is actually to hold this in place. And we do that with a ratchet strap and I'll show you how to do that. And then we take this all apart. So we attach it one point to the axle, another point to the body and we just put a ratchet strap and hold it in place. Okay, we've attached it to the axle and the body up the top there. And we'll get this ratchet strap going. Now we don't need a crank on it, we just need to hold position. Okay, that's, I'll just go another click past tight and that should be it. Yeah, that's about it. So that'll hold it in position when we remove the panhard. We are ready to move this, remove this panhard. So crack this bolt open. And we're gonna reuse this bolt, so we need to retain it. There we go. We need to lift this pan hard out of the way. And that's good. Now the other thing we need to do is move this um, ABS sensor line. We got a little bracket to relocate that as well. So just grab some pliers and I'll just unclip that. This clip here has just got a couple of barbs and you just want to squeeze them down and pull, pull it out. Hold on. There you go and just place it here for now, and then we'll reattach that later. One of the mounting points is a tap plate in the bottom here. So we got this plate and put the spigot facing down and that should actually drop into that recess. And if you want to, we'll just put the bolt in there and just make sure it's positioned properly. And then remove that. Next bit is to put the main block 
into the uh, original position. This folded bracket is actually the next part we need to install. So just place it through and twist it and we'll get the bolt through into the bottom there into that tap plate that we installed in the previous step. Now, just make sure that there it is, it's sitting in that recess properly. We've got the inner mounting block which bolts in from the bottom and has the relocated pivot on the top. It's also got a thread on the back. Now the way to install this is to come in from the top and drop it in. Make sure this bolt here lines up and the little M12 bolt on the back lines up and we're going to get that bolt in there and hand tight it. This is the factory one that we removed earlier on. I'm just going to put that back in place, hand tight. On the back here, M12 fine bolt. And make sure that all is all lined up and started cool. And what we're going to do, we're just going to nip them all up, get them all close before we do anything else. I'm just going to get it almost home, so not, not too tight. To make the next step easier, we want to just loosen off or um, just uh, remove the bolts that hold these brake line clamps in so we can gently push the brake lines out of the way. So undo these clamps and we'll gently just push the brake line back a little bit so that we can get access to the top mounting position. So I'll do that quickly. So uh, you can see that it's fairly easy to move and just gently push those back, that'll be good. Next step, we're going to gently push this pan out in place, put this plate on the back that allows us to have repositioned that clip for the ABS line. And everything went well, it should all line up just like that, beautiful. There's a nylon nut that goes on the back and the reason why we uh, loosened off that brake line is to make it a bit easier to get all this tightened up. Okay, that's looking good. So we're gonna nip it all up now. Okay, time to tighten everything up. So there's an order to this. We'll tighten the original bolt first, then these two M12s on the bottom and the side and then the last bolt will be the um, pivot at the top. So let's go and do that, 19 mil. Tighten the one on the bottom. One on the side. With this last pivot, because there's a rubber um, mount in there, the best thing to do is actually tighten this on the ground when it's at ride height. So we'll leave that to last when it's on the ground. So to make life easy, we'll put everything back in place. Um, this clip, now have a look at this ABS line. So you can see the clip there. We're just gonna slide it across so we can clip it into here. We'll just gently slide it over. It's, it's not too hard to do. It looks about right. So just twist it over and that should just clip straight back into there. Here you go. We'll reattach these brake lines as well. Just check that there's clearance to everything and it looks looks good here. We got clearance. Okay, we're almost done. Remove the ratchet strap, put it back on the ground and we'll torque this last one up and we're done. We got the car on the ground now and the panard's looking pretty much level, which is great. We just need to tighten this when it's on the ground so that the rubbers don't get biased one way. And we are done. There you go. We have our pan hard relocator installed and this is what we wanted to achieve. We wanted to move that pivot up 50 mil, which is your standard lift. And that restores the factory geometry, which means the axle is where you know, Toyota intended it to be. Um, the other nice thing is we retain the factory rubber bushes in this pan hard rod uh, and a lot of people say that the factory bushes are always the best. The other nice thing about this kit, no modifications, no bending of brackets or welding like other kits on the market, fully reversible. So if you decide to put your lift back down or put your car back down, just take that back and put it back to normal. 
If you need any more information, check out the website. Look at that flex. <laughs> Like a pterodactyl. <laughs> yes. if, if your axle's like this, you're probably on your side. SOS. <laughs>